Sam, may I present my screen? Ah, uh, why not? Sir, there is written you are not allowed to. Okay, let me check. It should. Um... Okay, now check deeper. Yes, ma'am. Somehow it got changed. Okay. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, is it present? Yes, yes. You see it. So, good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity to present the recap of the class that was uh, discussed on 3rd of Feb. The discussion was started with a quote stated by former US President, Mr. Dwight D. Eisenhower, that plans are nothing, but planning is everything. In life, all of you want to reach somewhere but don't know exactly where we want to reach and how could we reach there. So the very first step to fulfill our dream is to set a goal. And to set this goal, the starting point is to have a vision. Vision is the world view through our eyes. The reason that why do we want to reach that specific destination only. After setting a goal, the next step is to have a plan to achieve that goal. Plan is the method through which we could reach where we want to reach. But plans may vary for person to person according to their vision and the problems that they have to face during their journey. Because life is full of twists and turns and uh, because of these hurdles, the plans that we made may undergo change. But the most important thing is to have faith and a burning desire to succeed in our journey. As in building this great institution, Sir had to face many problems, but he believed that the act of building an institution is an act of faith and education is the only solution of all the societal issues and with this faith he succeeded in fulfilling his dream actually this faith is nothing but uh, the proper planning that we do in peace planning is indispensable because it keeps the because it because it keeps the uh, spirit of achieving our goal intact within us because planning is that burning desire and the force that pushes us that pushes us, us to keep thinking correct and eventually to go ahead towards our goal. So it is said very true by our, respect, by our respected former president, Mr. APJ Abdul Kalam, that uh, dream is not the thing you see in sleep, but is that thing that doesn't let you sleep. So to, so to develop an elaborate plan, to clarify for ourselves the direction to travel towards our destination, we should in doing proper planning because the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed in war. But it doesn't mean that uh, after making a plan, we should be completely dependent on that. No, never. We should be slightly flexible also, so that whenever we have to face the ground situation and our original plan proved to be flopped, we could face the situation valiantly and intellectually. That's all from my side, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Deepa. Yes, Dushyan. Good morning, sir. My name is Pandey. Today I am going to talk about what we have learned in previous class. In previous class, we are talking about the quote by former US president who led America during the Second World War. He quote a statement that plans are nothing and planning is everything. Sir told us to discuss about that what he actually means by this quote. Then some of our classmates have expressed their opinion about that court, what they possibly mean by that statement. Then sir elaborated further and told us that act of planning, we are generally doing two things. Firstly, we set goals. Then we develop a plan to reach the destination. Then how we decide how we will reach. So what and how? The plans are actually the answer of second question, how? For example, at some stage, we all wanted to take admission in Department of Business Administration in Aligarh Muslim University. Then each one of have 
different strain like some of us are weak in language and some of us are weak in other sectors also so we all have a different plan but have same goal so plans are our exact method to which we reach our destination like sir country budget recently presented by our finance minister nirmala sitaraman it is just a type of financial planning and if we plan for our career then it is a descriptive type of planning but things are not always happening according to plan because in a real life there are too many twist and turns sometimes we change and sometimes this is due to environmental change and i when either over made that statement he actually referring that yes peace time planning is very important and we may develop elaborate plans but when we are in war situation against the enemy the exact ground situation there are too many thing that to be changed and original plans may be dropped according to the situation but he said that planning is indispensable indispensable because it forces you to think ahead it forces you to clarify yourself to travel the destination you have in your mind but you may have to be slightly flexible as regards the plan you have developed because plans will have to undergo a change that why he made that statement in process of planning we generally do three things like first we set goals then we have a plan then there is a time frame time frame is also important when do we do planning like if we are going to write some examination then it should be done in given time frame like we have to complete the syllabus within one year or six month of span when the examination going to be scheduled so sir in core planning we generally talking about these three things first goals then time frame and then plans thank you sir thank you dushyant so starting with the skin uh, uh, i think uh, she did a reasonably good job of introduction and uh, the skin are you there yes y yes uh, but uh, i think uh, you need to have a slightly more relaxed style of communication when you speak it sounds as if you are uh, under pressure so have more relaxed this time uh, and uh, this gradually comes through experience uh, expose yourself to these situations more often and that way you will develop uh, your you have you seems to have a natural flair for speaking but uh, learn to modulate your voice jo utar chadhav hote hain bolne mein kahan rukna hai kahan thoda sa stress dena hai so those things you have to pick up otherwise you seem so you have a reasonably good command over language and uh, I'll, i'll i'll try my best uh, from next time okay and uh, second uh, your you have described your weakness as you know eagerness to help isn't it and uh, that might have landed you in some disappointments in life yes, that's at times that that is fair i think that's all part of learning and growing in fact uh, i read a quote to uh, said that distrusting somebody is worse than being deceived by him isn't it so our uh, mental disposition where we start with a positive thing okay, somebody is trust for you yes uh, Uh, i read a hadith which says that a pious person will not be bitten by the same snake twice okay. so that also we should uh, be very clear that ek uh, galti ko bar bar repeat na kiya jaye in fact galti is a galti only if it is repeated twice otherwise it's always a learning experience yeah i'm working on that sir that's why In fact, हमारे एक 
फादर के क्लास फेलो थे वहीं बिजनौर में डिग्री कॉलेज में पढ़ाते थे तो उन्होंने एक बड़ा दिलचस्प कवि शेर कहा कि उनका नाम था प्रोफेसर राघवर डॉक्टर राघवर नंद साहब अंग्रेजी पढ़ाते थे और हिंदी में शायरी करते थे उन्होंने एक शेर कहा कि हुई प्यार करके मधुर भूल ऐसी कि पछता रहा हूँ किए जा रहा हूँ तो ऐसा भी ना हो कि आप बार बार उसी भूल को किए जाए तो और फिर जो आपके एस्पिरेशन हैं वो बड़े नोबेल हैं वेमेन एम्पावरमेंट की आपने बात की लेकिन कहीं ना कहीं देखिए ऐसा होता है कि पहले हमें खुद कामयाब होना होता है एज ए पर्सन के वेन वी आर आवर सेल्फ सक्सेसफुल बाई वर्ल्ड स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ सक्सेस देन वी आर एबल टू डू ए गुड जॉब फॉर अदर्स ऑल्सो Yes, I said that's why I said I want to be a uh, professionally. I want to uh, reach at a position financially stable, stability, and then I would do things like. लेकिन इसमें ये भी है कि देखिए to keep the fire intact within ourselves. थोड़े बहुत initiatives लेते रहने चाहिए उस account पे भी. So that uh, keeps the fire burning and that prepares us. जैसे सरसैयत के बारे में आप देखिए कि All through his life, he was doing his tits, tits bits. Ghazi Pur gaye, to wahan bhi koshish ki ki madrasa ek khul jaye, ki school khul jaye. Wo Muradabad rahe, to wahan pe bhi ek school khulne ki khola balki it is still there. To kahin gaye, to scientific society bana di. To he was always very action oriented, doing something. and finally when he was free from his uh, governmental job responsibility then he devoted himself full time to the building of the institution okay. so keep doing and keep moving in the in that direction hamare zakir hussain sahab jo vice chancellor guzre hain unka ek jumla hai ki thuk thuk karte raho kuch na kuch ho hi jayega bada saada sa jumla hai but i like it very much keep doing our activities shama uh, fatima who is from lucknow yes sir uh, aapne bsc maths kiya hai to uh, bsc maths so are ya jab jo bhi science ke aam taur se students hote hain unka ye kehte hain bahut logical bent of mind develop ho jata hai It's scientific temper you have an objective way of doing things lekin uh, aapne जो स्टार्ट किया अपने पर्सनालिटी को डिस्क्राइब करना वो यहीं से किया कि व्हाट आर योर वीकनेसेस मेरी विषय मैंने पहले भी यहाँ यू हैव ज्वाइन द क्लास ओनली टुडे तो वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट दिस इशू आर लिया कि वी शुड फोकस ऑन आवर स्ट्रेंथ यस वी शुड बी कॉन्शियस ऑफ आवर वीकनेसेज ऑल्सो बट वी बिल्ड सक्सेस इन लाइफ ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ आवर स्ट्रेंथ Like for example, yes, suppose I say at this juncture that I am not good in mathematics. Fine, I can complement that skill. So, like for example, I need that skill for my research, for my analysis, for example. But I can take somebody's help, and I have been taking help of my other colleagues who are good on that. Isn't it? So. Uh, but uh, what are your core strengths that is what uh, decides your success in life so and it is good that you are mentoring your students uh, are you already doing it or you intend doing it no sir i am i am doing it no well, that's good that's good. Yes, Very good so uh, i i may connect you to some Uh, people who may be helpful in, if you want to make a career as a consulting in consulting firms. Yes, sir. I may connect you to some people on that account. <laughs> Now, Deepa, you have uh, made a very good presentation. Your PPT was very good. And, Thank uh, you so much, sir. Uh, you articulated because my ideas that day were not very organized and systematic. I I know it. because uh, i also when there is a theme which you on your feet you feel like speaking 
often we waver here and there but you did a good job of summarizing the whole thing thank you so much all the points across uh, but uh, deepa when you make a presentation one thing we have to be more conscious of is the synchro synchronization of the written text the ppts with your verbal talk there has to be a coordination okay so that was one area where i felt uh, that uh, there was some bit of uh, you know mismatch okay sir but otherwise it was a good job so dushyant your content was also good uh, yes. you covered all the points but maybe uh, you may have to work a bit more on your language proficiency especially your pronunciation so when you work on that it would be very good for you so we spend next two years which you are going to spend in this department on that particular area okay okay sir now let us uh, continue our discussion on the theme that we were um, having and uh, i think we have already talked about the three aspects which uh, dushyant also stated that is uh, we need to have goals we need to have plans and we need to have a time frame in fact there is an acronym which is used for smart goal setting in fact it is called smart only what does this smart stands for smart stands for specific measurable and achievable let us talk about three things first so goals that are specific like for example uh, again continuing with the example which uh, you all can appreciate that is your desire to get into an mba program or the desire to get into MBA Aligarh, for example. Suppose if you have set that goal for yourself, is it is it specific? Yes, sir. Hmm? It is. Yeah. And it is measurable also. Once you make it, you can yeah, measure. Yeah, it can be measured. Way. Yes, sir. Okay. It can be a possible. And is it achievable? yes sir it is so uh, goals that are achievable challenging but achievable if we set impossible goals for ourselves then uh, this uh, is a dampener because uh, if we set too high goals which are uh, beyond the realistic possibility then also it creates a dissonance the so goals should be achievable but challenging but challenge it should not be that simple now the third the fourth letter uh, alphabet r i have come across two uh, versions of it and i'll discuss both one says realistic r stands for realistic and the second says relevant now which one sounds better to you which would uh, fulfill this uh, desire to have smart goals so i guess relevant relevant and why so unless and until there is a relevancy in our goals like for example realistic uh, we are in our real life so we'll try to set up goals that we are able to achieve 
Yeah. So I think these both are interconnected with each other. We can't deny one and we can't, you know, just take one. We can't ignore it. We have to take them uh, together. They have to go hand in hand. This is what yes. I... You, you are right. Actually, I also thought over it. And I, th I uh, thought that maybe this achievable has already conveyed the sense of realism. Isn't it? So to me, yes, relevant sounds a better expansion of this term R. Why? You are, because you are very right. For example, uh, if you want to be in MBA and then you are or MBA is uh, a profession which can or will uh, become a passport for your success in life. Then only, you know, getting into MBA is worth it. Is it? In fact, again, what we have discussed earlier, it may not be worth it for somebody. It may not be relevant. In fact, uh, I remember, I think uh, a decade back, there was a student who got into MBA and MCA, both. And he has already taken admission in MBA and he was due to take admission in MCA. And he came to me, sir, should I switch over? And we had a extended discussion and I tried to analyze his personality and then I helped him reflect on his personality better. And I realized that he is uh, basically a technology man. He is very, very good when he is at his own. And many of the achievements that he has had they were his uh, personal individual achievements. So I, we, in fact, we then both inferred that maybe switching over to MCA might be a good idea for him. So the goals that we set for ourselves should be relevant. And uh, T here stands for being time bound. There has to be a time frame. So if there are these four, five elements in a goal, we would call that a motivational goal. A goal which uh, forces or impels us to act. But the other day we were talking about vision with the hierarchy of aspirations, which is often uh, in the strategy literature it is called strategic what is the strategic intent these are starting with vision I talked about Sir Sayyid's example and uh, he had this vision of uh, educating his people and educating in a broader sense of the term where he used not just talim but tarbiyat so that becomes his mission that becomes his vision now naturally he has to do something specific for that purpose and uh, so whenever we set out to do something what we are doing we are we are actually fulfilling some unfulfilled needs of the world. At any point of time, the world would have some needs. So how your action is going to contribute to that need? Like, for example, Sir Sayyid analyzed that modern liberal education, he thought, was the need of the hour. And he felt that there is a crying need to focus on that. And he focused on that. So we have mission. From vision, we crystallize our mission. What exactly I will do? Then in the next, next in the hierarchy is objectives. <coughs> what are objectives and goals? 
often these two terms are used interchangeably but there is a fine distinction sir objectives are the list of uh, things that we have to achieve in order to fulfill our goals yeah. okay i give you an example from our own context like for example when we were uh, we we have our vision clear naturally which we have derived from our university's vision as a department and we have a mission also like for example our mission could be that we want to professionalize management practices of course now for that uh, we need uh, this the hardware as also the software what is the hardware the hardware is uh, the the physical infrastructure that you need you need classes you need you know, you know conference facilities you need faculty chambers and all that that's the hardware and we need the software how do we prepare people the quality of it intellectual in stimulation that our teachers are able to provide to students the desire they, are they able to create a desire in themselves to you know become a better professional that's the software part so i am giving you an example of the hardware part which you can appreciate better so for example uh, when we were uh, reflecting on our own strengths and weaknesses we are realize that overall in terms of software we are good but in terms of hardware we are not that good and uh, some of you when you physically visit uh, the university some of you may not yet have had an occasion to visit amu although many of you may have been part of it so you might have seen our older building in which we were located no so it was uh, a so i can use a very mild term it was an architectural blunder in fact uh, its corridors were so narrow that i mean it became difficult for two people to walk in those corridors okay. in fact uh, when you we were having the inauguration of the building i in a lighter vein quoted mustaf yusufi there उन्होंने लाहौर की गलियों को बयान करते हुए ये कहा था एक जगह कि लाहौर की गलियां इतनी तंग हैं कि अगर एक मर्द और औरत आमने सामने से आ रहे हैं तो वाहिद शक्ल निकाह की निकलती तो आई जोकिंगली सेट की आई मीन नो वंडर मेनी ऑफ अवर बैचमेट्स आर नाउ लाइफ पार्टनर्स तो it was so narrow so we set out to you know uh, achieve this target that we will improve our physical infrastructure so that became our objective improve physical infrastructure of the physical ambience and uh, we set out a goal for ourselves and the goal was have the new building ready by 2017 can you appreciate the difference between object uh, the difference between objectives and goals improve physical infrastructure of the department and have a building ready by 2017 One so can we say that the planning that we talking about is the objective and the end the thing is the goal can we say that yes exactly actually uh, objectives are open ended but goals are specific actually this is acronym that i discussed is smart it acronym it specifically applies to goals am i clear on this goals are close ended they have a time yes sir 
and then then only they have an, a, a motivational element that pushes you ki nahi hame karna hai in fact it so happened that uh, the goals uh, we set for a part in fact uh, when you we were having the first meeting with the main donor that is when the goal was set for us and vice chancellor who was spearheading it naturally he expressed a desire he said i want this building to be inaugurated before i demit this office of the vice chancellor and he was due to demit his office in may 2017 so we set a goal that okay that's a very realistic aspiration or uh, that's a very um, noble aspiration and we should strive we when he is working so hard for getting funds for us we should also honor his aspiration so whatever is the reason the goal was set and then by, uh, by the grace of almighty we were able to achieve it so time bound when there, was, there is this element the, the element of smart thing in us then uh, we have the other uh, the last thing in the hierarchy which we call targets what are targets targets have an even shorter time frame so for example suppose you have a building which is to be built and you have uh, many of its components for example uh, creating the shell and core the the civil work in the building so you'll have a target for it we will achieve this this like for example usme bhi hote hain ki plinth level is tak pura ho jayega fir hum we will uh, have uh, the walls and then we will have the first slab cast casted on such and such date and uh, second slab casted on such and such date so we set targets so targets are having an even shorter time frame in the business uh, par, uh, context it could be even you know daily target it could be weekly target depending on the kind of product you are in for some of the sales kind of situations even daily targets have to be monitored and when uh, you will take up marketing jobs or sales jobs after doing your mba you will be asked to send sales reports each day so targets are having shorter time frame even shorter time frame. like in your mba preparation you can set your targets ke, okay maths should be over by the such and such date usme bhi you have topics this topic will be over in this week like okay so this is what uh, we have as a part of the first exercise of planning that is goal setting so let us repeat the hierarchy we started with vision then we had mission then we had objectives then we had goals and then we had targets this is you may in the literature come across some other terms also like purpose for example and uh, somebody other day talked about foresight so there may be some overlaps like for example personally i would place uh, foresight with vision <clears throat> and purpose with mission there is a french term which which is called reason reason de tire what is the purpose of your existence that is your mission reason of your existence and you also have to ask this question to yourself when you have come to this world you have been blessed with a purpose and your job is to detect that purpose what you have to set out to achieve 
In fact, uh, Aristotle once ma made this statement. He said, uh, he said that uh, where your unique talents meet the needs of the world, there lies your vocation. And the best course would be when you set out to do something like that, somebody is ready to pay for you. So, for example, you know, teaching is my passion. And uh, the government pays for me. Isn't it? In fact, uh, I envy my colleagues in the literature, Department of English Literature and uh, Urdu. I say, you, you are such a fantastic lot, you get paid for studying literature. <clears throat> so, for many of us, reading literature may be a passion, but we don't get paid for it. So, uh, you that's your job as a career planning. I think when you plan for your career, you have to also ask these questions to yourself. What is that unique thing which you can do? And is there somebody who is ready to pay for it? <clears throat> now comes the plan part of it. What are different types of plans? In how many ways we can express our these aspirations which we have talked about? So plans could have different formats. Like I talked about the descriptive form, format. So, for example, uh, we are working on a project, an entrepreneurial project, a group of colleagues of ours. And uh, we have developed a background note for it. That's a descriptive plan. What is this idea that we have? In fact, maybe someday I'll just share that with you just to help appreciate what is a descriptive plan? Then uh, we have format. by our product project management company which was managing the project so there were you know stages set out so casting of slab first slab date was mentioned and there was a bar indicating that and you know we knew clearly as to how the progress is going to take place and we have we had a benchmark to monitor <clears throat> so these are graphic plans then I told you, they gave you the example of budgets, the budget which was presented. The fin when uh, plan is presented in financial terms. So there could be n number of ways in which the plans could be uh, presented. And uh, I shared with you some of these formats. Then uh, plans are also presented in terms of its frequency time frame so we have let us say the long range plans and we have medium term plans and we have short term plans Sorry for this <clears throat> some office work. So uh, I was talking about time frame when uh, plants are described as 
the long range plans or short range plans or medium term plans. This is also presented as a strategic plan, the operational plan and the tactical plan. Okay. So we may have the highest level of a strategic plan for the organization, then the operational plans. Sometimes when there are units, business units, like for example, in university also we have units. So they may have their own strategic and operational plan. Like our department is one of the unit of university. So we have a, a strategic plan, we have a tactical plan. What is specifically like, for example, for summer training, what we will do, that would be a tactical plan. And we develop SOPs for each of these. Then uh, let me see if I've missed out something. So I've talked about uh, plans with differing frequency with, with different formats and uh, time horizons. Yes, I've talked about. Yes, frequency also I need to talk about. This was the something which I missed. What is the frequency of use? There are some plants which are standing plants, and there are some plants which are single use plants. Like, for example, we prepared this plan for our management complex. Naturally, it was a non routine activity for the organization. Every time we will not be called upon to have a new building. Now we have got it ready. But we did planning for it and this is a single use plan. So sometimes organizations have to do jobs which are required once in a while. So we have single use plans. And there are some plans which are standing plans. Which are there for routine activities. Let me give you an example our, from our own context. I talked about the uh, plan for new building of the department. But let us say our plan for how we would monitor the students' performance. Now, this is something which uh, we would require each year. Whenever there is a fresh batch, we need to have our plan. So for standing plans, we have uh, three things done. We specify policies, we specify procedures, and we specify rules. So at the highest level of standing plans, we have a policy. For example, we have a university has a policy of monitoring performance of the students through attendance. For example, this is one of the element of performance. So we are required to attend the classes. Especially when there is a residential setup, it is expected that the students will attend the classes regularly. So, so the policy is physical presence in the classes. We have to ensure physical presence of the students in the class. What is the rule? The rule is they need to fulfill an attendance requirement of 75%. What is the procedure? The procedure is the individual teachers will record their attendance at, in the beginning of the class. And at the end of the semester, they will share it with the dean's office, which would compile and would prepare a cumulative report. That's the procedure. So, based on the frequency of use, we may have three types or two types of plans single use plans and standing plans. In the standing plans, we have policies, rules, and procedures. So, that's all for today. Again, we will meet tomorrow and we will carry this discussion forward.
sir uh, i actually want to uh, have a clarity on something sir you mentioned about strategic operational and tactical plans so strategical and uh, sorry strategic and tactical plans are the same and operational plans are different from no no from strategic plans only the operational plans are right okay generally okay. operational plans are related to functional areas in the business context so you may have a marketing plan for example you may have a financial plan and like that and from that you drive your tactical plan in each of these areas and they have to be integrated naturally thank you sir thank you okay thank you sir 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 thank you sir